All right, people. Welcome to week 87 of the Wrestling Rundown, where I'm going to start off with a little story. Oh, all right. Story time with Thomas Wolf. Once upon a time, I was tired, so I took a nap. Okay. I woke up, did some stuff, and I was tired again. In other words, I was retired. That's... I'm not sure how I feel about that. I was curious where he was going. <laughs> yeah, I... Well, if you um, did it like that one, we'll talk about another, maybe more important retirement in a bit. Yes. But first, let's talk about some other and stuff. Yeah, the know. shirts we're all wearing are no indication. No, not at all. That's, that's all right, so as far as matches that happened on Monday Night Raw, this is the Raw Review, by the way. Yeah. Uh, we had Dolph I said Monday Night Raw. <laughs> I said that. We had Dolph Ziggler defeat Kevin Owens. Uh, we had Charlotte defeat Alicia Fox. We had Bray Wyatt defeat Ryback. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the Radical Mongoose Adam Rose defeat Titus O'Neil. We had the League of Nations defeat the Lucha Dragons. Tamina defeated Becky Lynch. And the Usos and the Dudleys defeated the New Day and Mark Henry in an eight-man tag team table match. When you list it all out, it sounds like there's a lot more matches than I thought there were. I know, right? Yeah. Um, so... Not a lot of build in a lot of these matches. So good matches all around, but we're going to talk about the main storyline stuff, starting with what started as Miz TV with Chris Jericho, then turned into the highlight reel with The Miz, which was a fantastic transition. The carpet got rolled out. Yeah. The Geratron 6000 got dropped from the ceiling. Whatever. Yeah, um, and it was a skew also. It didn't... Both sides didn't come down at the exact... Yeah, it was a little, right. yeah, well, they, it was, a little wonky. They were improvising it. I mean, they, they didn't even bring the house plane. It, it was, it was yeah. slightly askew. And, uh, yeah, D yeah, Dean Ambrose's... A lot of people mentioned that on Twitter, by the way. Dean Ambrose's uh, potted plant was still there. It was very dead, uh, but it was there. Uh, on top of the stool that Roman Reigns gave him. Um, I'm glad you put it that way, because it would be way more awkward if you said that Dean Ambrose's potted plant was on Roman Reigns' stool. <laughs> You're good at making things weird. Um, I'm good at a lot of stuff. That's true. Uh, so yeah, th this just irked the Miz to. Is Steve falling over there? Get yourself together, Steve. Jesus. Um, yeah, no. Th this just pissed Miz off because Jericho kept bringing up the fact that AJ knocked Miz's teeth out of his head. Uh, yeah, which he he has veneers on his teeth, which I didn't know. You know? Makes sense though if he's a movie star, he's gonna have perfect teeth. Exactly. Um, and then Miz swerved it back at Jericho saying, Well, AJ did beat you in his debut match on Monday Night Raw. And uh, then I don't remember exactly what was said that brought AJ out. Well, Jericho said something to the effect of, We all know AJ Styles is good, but is he great? Uh, okay, yeah, Re reiterating the. What, what's yeah. led into the AJ versus Y2J2. Yeah. And, and I think he was going to try and have AJ as like his guest on the highlight reel. Yeah. Because I don't think he felt that Miz was cool enough. Uh, probably well, not. Miz isn't. Uh, no. So AJ's making his way down. We have Miz actually attack Jericho from behind. Uh, and then we get... Yeah, that didn't work out well for the Miz. No. Uh, it ended up turning into a two-on-one beatdown as AJ got involved. Uh, and then we had the stare down between Jericho and AJ. And the Miz got back in the ring and got thrown out again. Yeah. yeah, Miz just kept going after them. Miz tried so hard and just it, it didn't work out for him. Miz tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, it didn't even matter. Thank you, Lincoln Park. Uh, and so yeah, President so Abraham Lincoln Park. Uh, this bu building more for the AJ versus Y2J, which will be on SmackDown this week, which we all get to see live. Yeah. We will be there at SmackDown. Screw you, everybody else. <laughs> Who's not in Portland. Um, yeah, y'all would fuck off. Too much? Too much. I flipped him off, so... All right. Uh, you say something mean to the people. I can't do it. Um, don't be a little bitch. Now we'll travel whoa, to Portland. Whoa, go whoa. smack now, now hold on. Now you just gotta move your lips, and then we edit it so that. Should I get like an attitude face or like? No, just a normal no. face. 
You're a cunt. <laughs> Sorry, I, I did, didn't really mean that. Moving on. Uh, we had some diva stuff. Uh, I don't know we why. Had some diva. I don't know why stuff. we had Charlotte versus Alicia again, but that it's, happened. It's the fake build to the fact that they announced that. Brie gets a title shot at Fastlane against Charlotte. Yeah. And Brie obviously couldn't be involved in the match because she was backstage with Dan Bryan. Right. Uh, but then we Probably had... giving him a lot of hugs. We had the the, the singles match between Tamina and uh, Becky Lynch with Sasha commentary, uh, Naomi out in Tamina's corner. Naomi got a real ghetto girl fight yeah. on Sasha Banks. Yeah, like uh, Sasha ends up... Uh, oh, yeah, Tamina was looking at her and started talking trash, so Sasha gets up... She walks up to the ring and she gets attacked by Naomi, Just like world star style. Knocked out. Uh, and then yeah, Sasha ends up getting tossed into the. Uh, That's a reference that I'm not sure if I'm happy I understand. A world star. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sasha gets tossed into the stairs and then Becky gets out to help uh, Sasha. She ends up getting yeah the suplex to Naomi on the outside. Yeah. That which, was Bad. Naomi Jay, they'll call it the last plex. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, we don't, don't like that too. at all. Uh, we don't need to rename everyone's version of everything. It's true. Um, but yeah, so then Becky gets back in, ends up getting caught with a super kick, uh, and Tamina picks up the win. Um, yeah, th this is building towards we now have the tag team match at Fast Lane where Becky and Sasha will take on Naomi and Tamina. Um, okay. Uh, so yeah. They realized they had time to kill before WrestleMania, <laughs> so they couldn't build like the championship match too fast. Yeah, we need something in between. Um, so okay, so we also had what was originally supposed to be just a tag team tables match uh, between the New Day and the Usos. The Dudleys tried to get themselves in on the action, and they did, and yeah. they did, which subsequently turned it into an eight man tag. And then we're wondering, okay, who's New Day going to get as their fourth member? They end up getting the world's strongest unicorn, Mark Henry. Yeah. yeah. Um, Who can bust a move? Uh, which, yeah. Sure. Um, well, he, he could bust something. <laughs> he could he bust was a, a sexual things. chocolate unicorn. He didn't bust any tables, though, because he ended up leaving because the New Day kept telling him what to do. Yeah, nobody tells him what to do. Yeah, he's the world's strongest unicorn. The Nobody puts Henry in the corner. <laughs> Damn it! I was gonna say that. <laughs> he stole it from you. That was fantastic. Punch a bottle. Uh, <laughs> so okay, that, that's our portal. <laughs> <laughs> Delayed portal. <laughs> oh, I wish we had somebody standing off camera to throw <laughs> throw a different a different bottle from off screen. Uh. So yeah, the, the match wasn't really anything to write. Oh, really delayed. <laughs> the match wasn't anything to really write home about. It was kind of kind of bland. Uh, some fun double teams, du double super kicks from the Usos. They did a uh, double what's up. Yeah, yeah that was that, that was that was all right. Uh, ultimately, Big E ends up getting the 3D through the table. Uh, and Jay is hurt from something. I don't know exactly what he, he did. He went up for a superfly splash and got pushed off and uh, landed funky on his leg. Oh, I did not see that part. Um, but yeah, I so think you're looking at me. so we got the uh, we got you know new days you know gathering themselves. They're trying to get the hell out of there. And then all of a sudden, uh, Dudley boys don't want to play nice anymore. Yeah, Bubba uh, just decides to fucking haul off an attack, <laughs> and then. And Devon went, are we doing this? How are we doing this? And then he gave a short arm close like Jay. Like, I was joking, but whatever. <laughs> I thought Jimmy would think it was funny. Wouldn't uh, that be a great reveal? If Devon, like, Devon just took it the wrong way? No, if Devon, like, just told Bubba beforehand, like... Wouldn't it be great if we just, like, turned on the Usos after the match? <laughs> they get that crazy Bubba look. Uh, so yeah, we got the the Dudleys as heels. Yeah, sure. I don't know necessarily if they're gonna be heels. They're just like gonna give I, a no fucks given tag. I, I, I feel like they're saying, "Hey, we were here. We were feuding with the New Day. Why did you guys get the spotlight all of a sudden just because and he an comes hour, back from injury and an hour type of match? Yeah, 
So. Well, yeah, because I mean yeah. the Dudley Boys were the number one contenders tag team for the whole time until the Usos show up out of nowhere. And then they, yeah, and then they, they, they and did. And then all the spotlight. attention goes off the Dudley Boys. They're reverted to doing things like the pre-show matches, right, on pay-per-views. The thing that makes me think that they're going heel, or at least that Bubba and Devon are going to play it as heel, is because after Bubba attacked, he yelled, "Do you know who we are?" Yeah, yeah. which was his heel catchphrase. Oh yeah, with yeah. the with the aces and eights, yeah. All right. Um, and then okay, so one one quick note before we move into the two. Was it the one I wanted to talk about? Yeah, 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 it. yeah. We had a match with yeah. my new favorite wrestler Adam Rose, <laughs> the Radical Mongoose. Renamed himself. Uh, no, no, no. The universe named him the Radical uh, Mongoose. Yeah, yeah and the universe gave Bo Dallas friends, three best yeah. friends. Yeah. That make the best friends. The man. <laughs> Uh, the Social Outcast is quickly becoming my second favorite uh, thing in the movie. The, fa- the fact that we've... Oh man, I want more Social Outcast New Day yeah. interaction. I, it's, just, it's fantastic. That little taste that we had was not enough. No, we need, we need more. Um, One of the... Yeah. Maybe, no. maybe tomorrow. Huh. Yeah. Neat. Live. Uh, yeah, Adam Rose, who's definitely... Uh, Way up on my rank, and you know, here's the thing: is I've always been a big Adam Rose fan. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I, like, I, was, I was like super into the gimmick when he first showed up as Adam Rose. I was, I, 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 I was hesitant at yeah. first because I like Leo, uh, but I, I was definitely reminded of all the things I like about Adam Rose when he beat Titus O'Neil completely clean with no interference from any other member of the social. Yeah, that's during the entire match. That's what I've noticed they've been doing with the social outcasts, though. Like, when they win, they win clean. It's pretty much a roll-up, but that's what happens. Look at your head going fall off. Did we break, Travis? <laughs> My notes say different, but we'll go with it. Adam Rose had a bowl of bootios this morning. Yeah, because it cures hepatitis O'Neal. Yeah. yeah. If you don't believe us, watch last week's SmackDown Rundown. Uh, no, I, I'm i always for a Titus O'Neil loss. Yeah, and then Titus clothesline Adam Rose over the top rope. After trying to give him a wedgie, I think. And then... I missed that part, but, too. But, yeah, you were taking your booty notes. Oh. My booty notes? Yeah. yeah. And then, but then... Free with every box of booty notes. Adam, the, the clothesline didn't stop the party because Adam Rose was still celebrating... Yeah, he back, got backflipped over the top rope and fell right into the social outcast who caught him and like started pulling him back. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, hey, we're getting some big wins for yeah. Uh, social outcast, they've beaten Dolph Ziggler now. Yeah. And Titus O'Neil, and the Dudleys. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and la- last year Heath Slater beat Seth Rollins. Yeah. So. And Curtis Axel has the record for longest reign in a Royal Rumble. Yeah, and Bo Ryder beat Flo Ryder in a rap battle. Yeah, this group is multifaceted. Yeah. We're yeah. we're looking at future Hall of Famers. Yeah. We're, all I, of them are going to be two-time Hall of Famers. They're all going to be inducted separately and as a group. I'm all for it. Uh, all right, so let's talk about the, the big build towards the triple threat match at Fastlane. We started with the contract signing, which why are we doing a contract signing now? For a match that all three guys have already agreed to because they've been arguing over who's going to win. Because apparently contract signings add legitimacy. Yeah, well, sure. theoretically, they still, even though they agreed, they still have to have the documentation of the match. Like, yeah. just speaking non, like, in a purely kayfabe world where everything it that has to be legalized. Legit, yeah. Yeah, I'm, the contract signing makes it legal. So, in my head... The way I make all title matches get contract signings. But not all title matches get in ring contract signings. True. They save that for like the important big ones. And this is a okay. triple threat match with Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, and Dean Ambrose. Winner getting a spot at, at WrestleMania to face yeah. the Yeah. Okay. So it's not about all them right. agreeing, it's I'll about them making it official. Alright, I'll accept that. Uh, this goes the way of every. Yeah. Contract signing ever. Yeah, Stephanie's like, this is a contract signing and there will be no riffraff you 
whippersnapper. Or yeah, right? and so However, I, Stephanie talks at him. I like I read, but right after all three of them finish signing, she's like, hey, "My job here is done," and she bolts. Yeah, and then Dean Ambrose says to get right in Brock Lesnar's face, and then he gets thrown into uh, Roman Reigns' face, and then Roman Reigns gets a table thrown at his face, and then Dean Ambrose <laughs> gets F five. That fool with the table. That came from a promo that happened later, uh, in yeah. which uh, Dean Ambrose, uh, Dean Ambrose at two different times backstage expressed his interest in getting Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before, yeah. the, before the night was over, he was gonna get Brock Lesnar. Gonna get him. And get him. Uh, you know, and eventually Roman is like, yeah, yeah, let's let's go get him. And Dean's like, no, no, you stay the fuck back here. I, I, this is about, he's like, you had your shot, you fought him at WrestleMania last year, and you're going to get another shot at him at Fastlane. Uh, this is this is the time for me to fight Brock Lesnar. So he went to the ring and did everything in his power to call Lesnar out. Yeah. Especially talking about Paul Heyman holding Brock Lesnar's balls. Yeah, a lot of Brock Lesnar genitalia references. Yeah, yeah. Brock, Brock couldn't get it up for the big fight. Dean Ambrose always has a boner when he was fighting. <laughs> That wasn't in, that wasn't in the promo. <laughs> no, that was uh, Thomas Wolf originally. <laughs> Side notes from Thomas Wolf. Uh, Lesnar came out and beat the crap out of Dean Ambrose. And Dean Ambrose gave no fucks. Yeah. And uh, at first, I wasn't sure what was going to happen because Lesnar was just shit whipping him all over the arena, and then he takes him in and F fives him and starts to walk away, and then Dean's like, "Come back in here, motherfucker! <laughs> Look at me, I'm still moving." Uh, and yeah, and then Brock started to go back, uh, Roman Reigns ended up coming out from the, yeah, from the entrance, yeah, he, Roman he's got found, lost. he's found that thing twice I, in I his career. I just keeps getting lost. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so he makes his, makes his way down, he's at the bottom of the ramp, and Brock Lesnar's waiting for him to get in the ring, uh, at which point, Dean Ambrose makes the brilliant decision to low blow Brock Lesnar. Yeah. And Brock Lesnar sells... That, that's the only thing that Brock Lesnar really sells. Because I, when The Undertaker did it, he sold. When Dean Ambrose did it, he sold. I, Dean Ambrose's low blow lifted Lesnar off. Yeah, I don't think there was much selling going on there. That That's... I, I guess that's just the thing. It's like, hey, uh, so I'm going to be Brock Lesnar until you make me sell. Yeah. Okay. I'll make you not Brock Lesnar anymore. Um, yeah, but that shouldn't have hurt him too much if Paul was still holding his ball. This is true. Well, yeah, uh, Paul wasn't out there at the time. He was he was uh, lagging in his responsibility. Well, yeah, we all know. Brock was just like, hold these. I gotta go fight the damn <laughs> Well, Paul went out there with him. He's like, no, no, no. No, if you're gonna go fight, you need your balls, Brock. Okay, Paul. <laughs> this conversation is really weird. Um, so, yeah. We got, a, we got an official triple threat match that yeah. we haven't been touting for two weeks now. Um, yay. Uh, now, 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 now we gotta get sad. Yeah, remember that? Remember back in the beginning when I promised you another retirement story? Yeah. Well, here it is. Uh, um, Daniel Bryan retired. Yeah, that's not much of a story. Just, 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 to, like just to come out. Yeah. Like, just like, to, just to like pull the bandaid off the wound. Yeah, yeah, if you uh if you couldn't tell by the fact that all three of us have Daniel Bryan uh faces or catchphrases uh or on, both or uh, catchwords. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh on our shirts as well as our Daniel Bryan Funko Pop uh taking center stage in the ring here. Uh that'll be great for you listening to the podcast, you have no idea. Um but just imagine it. Yeah. Uh unfortunately you know, despite how well he felt, uh, how ready to get back in the ring he was, uh, he just a few days ago had another uh, brain scan that revealed that his brain wasn't in as good condition as he thought or felt. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what Will Smith was trying to warn the world about. Oh, yeah, that was that movie. Um, Which movie? Concussion. Oh. <laughs> Aptly titled. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, I guess it doesn't really come as a shock. No. It's, it's, 
it's unfortunate, but we're not really surprised. Uh, and he's he's spent the majority of the last two years on the shelf. Yeah. Um, it's it just it just sucks that you know he was he was so good when he was in his storyline when yeah. he had a direction. Uh, you know, the fact that he got to live the dream to be in the main event of WrestleMania, and you know there could have been plenty more, but with a 16-year career, the concussions just built up over yeah. time. And unfortunately, much like we had with Edge, well, obviously a different injury, but just so young having to retire. Yeah, uh, it's... it's Yeah, it sucks. It sucks that it came... So quick after he really established himself yeah. as such a popular wrestler. But it, Daniel Bryan's the perfect example of the f- phrase, um, the candle that burns twice as bright uh, only lasts half as long. Yeah. Uh, good be- job finishing that quote. That was good. Because he really did rise to rare popularity. Like, the. The level that only guys like Eddie Guerrero got, where they... Austin. Yeah, where they connected to the fans on more than just a, oh, I like this wrestler because he's cool, he does the thing level of, like, we feel for this wrestler, Mm -hmm. his journey is my journey, and we want him to succeed. We want to succeed with him. And the fact that we got that, the fact that he did make it to WrestleMania, that he did win the title, and that that wasn't the plan... That we got him there. Yeah. Um, it it needed to happen, and it's good that it did before he retired. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, for me, the biggest disappointment in the Daniel Bryan retirement story is all of the what-ifs and all of the missed possibilities we have now. Especially because, you know, it wasn't until after Daniel Bryan's two big injuries that basically ended up leading him to this moment where, you know, Kevin Owens was brought up to the main roster. Uh, You know, you have all the guys down on NXT still, guys like Finn Balor, guys like Sami Zayn, guys like Apollo Crews. Uh, And, you know, the fact that it would have been awesome to see some sort of storyline with him and Seth Rollins, you know, over the championship. I was waiting for uh, Daniel Bryan versus Sami Zayn. Yeah, for Sami Zayn uh, versus AJ Styles, who just showed up, versus uh, Nakamura, who, yeah. he'd, who he'd been personally really pushing to have that match with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I like you said, it's... It, it's nice to know that we got him to a place that he deserved, a, a, play, a, a place that he well earned. Um, I'm thankful for the fact that at the first time I got to go to WrestleMania, I got to see Daniel Bryan win the Intercontinental Championship. So not only was it Daniel Bryan, my first time at WrestleMania, but he wins my favorite championship. Uh, that's that's something that you know no one can take away from me. Um, you know, it's uh, I've got to see him wrestle live a couple times now. Uh, it's it's just unfortunate that we, you know, unless some miracle happens, which I doubt is going to, uh, we won't get to see that happen again. Um, like you said, the the missed opportunity, the classic matches he could have had at any type of pay per view or, uh, or even just on Raw or SmackDown, the 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 possibilities were endless. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's it's gotten cut way too short. Um, you know, we started doing the show not long after WrestleMania 30 when the Yes Movement was born. Yeah. Um. So, you know, we we've we've been doing this as you know, as long as we've seen the ups and downs of Daniel Bryan since his big WrestleMania moment. Um but uh I I think we can all agree and say thank you Daniel Bryan 
for everything you did. Uh, thank you for the matches, the memories, the uh, you know the moments that you had. You know, it's something that I don't think anyone of this wrestling generation is going to forget. Any last words? Um, I think I've said pretty much all I have to say. Like I said, I'm just glad that that a guy like Daniel Bryan, who by all accounts was never supposed to make it, got to be the guy for even a second. Like for, his time at the top was short, but it was just so meaningful. Yeah, and I think beyond what he did, uh, the fact that he did what he did, I think opened the door for what we now know as NXT. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, because when NXT first started, if you want to think back to those gross days of when it was a fake reality competition thing where people were getting voted off, and, you know, that's where Daniel Bryan started. Yeah. That's where he first broke in in WWE, and you had the, you know, Heath Slater and Justin Gabriel and Titus O'Neil and the Bray Nexus. Wyatt, and all of them all came up through this weird version of NXT that was stupid, but the idea that somebody came off of the independence, and not even like the other big independent, which at the time would have been TNA. Yeah. Because no, we saw what happened when someone came off TNA. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, and it, that happens, uh, and that that was never a big surprise or a big deal when somebody would either jump ship from WWE and go to TNA and be a big star over there, or somebody would uh, jump ship from TNA and go to WWE, and, you know, people would know, oh, well, this guy was on the other TV show. You know, Daniel Bryan was coming off the indies where he, you know, he wasn't getting TV time every week, mm -hmm. uh, and super huge reactions, and, you know, because of that, it really opened, I think, the idea, it opened their eyes to the fact that you could bring in guys like Sami Zayn and Neville and Kevin Owens who are super popular on the indies and the wrestling fans will know who these people are and it will make a difference. Yeah, and it did. And, uh, yeah, it's... Uh... Man. Uh, that is it for the Raw Review. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't thanks forget to listening, like, and comment, and subscribe. Yeah, comment your favorite Daniel Bryan moment, your favorite Daniel Bryan match. How about uh, your favorite Bryan Danielson moment? Yeah, there you go. American yeah. Dragon. Uh, you know, him and... Him share and this video with your friends if you liked it. If you hated it, share it with your enemies. Hey, share it with somebody. Yeah. If you think we suck. Give it to the person you hate most. And make Share it with the ones you love. And be sure to check out the description. Click all those links so you can get to all of our different types of social medias. Like Facebook, them. Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Reddit, emails, and a podcast. Podcast. And, of course, to the left of Kevin Hawk, there is a playlist. And this is it on the playlist currently. Yes. Uh, it out. isn't until later... That there's going to be more out there, but I guarantee you that this week is going to have more than one video. Yes. Because Probably. Unless the world ends tomorrow. That would suck. That would suck. Cause I really after don't... Smackdown. Okay. Oh, after Smackdown. Okay. That's well, fine. Okay. Yeah. You just won't... During Titus O'Neil's entrance. Yeah! <laughs> worth it! <laughs> what if he's at the beginning of Smackdown? Yeah. You better not Still be worth it. Run. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, there will be Fuck a be there Smackdown, live Smackdown rundown with, with live results, the live experience. You'll be hearing us talk about it. Uh, we got Thomas. He's going to do his top five of January. Yeah. We got midweek wrap-up. We're getting closer to uh, NXT TakeOver in Dallas. We've got Lucha Underground continuing. And then later this week, we will have the indie news with results from PWG. AIW, WSU, and CZW. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next.
anyone can say it. Say what? The, the new thing we say? Actually, there's a new new thing that we say. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You know who I'm glad Daniel Bryan didn't? Wait, did he? Uh, yeah, there was sometimes because he was the Miz's sidekick for a while. Huh. Daniel Bryan won because fuck Alex Riley. Yeah.